What's going on guys welcome back today we're going to start a new journey on this channel and this is going to be the C programming journey I want to teach you guys C programming and I want to do this in three playlists I want to start with a beginner playlist I want to move on to an intermediate playlist and I want to end this with an advanced playlist and then we can still do some C projects on the side and all that but I want to teach you C programming step by step with three playlists you could also say three courses and they're roughly structured. This is a rough idea that I already have in my hand, but of course it depends on your feedback. So if I make the beginner tutorial and no one watches it, or we have like 500 views per episode, then I'm probably not going to go into more advanced stuff uh, when it comes to C programming. But if you guys like the beginner tutorial, I'm going to do more intermediate stuff as well. And I'm going to move on to the advanced stuff. If you also watch the intermediate stuff, the idea is to start with a basic beginner playlist where I teach you about the basic stuff like data types, variables, operators, functions, arrays, pointers, file operations, and so on. So pretty general stuff, error handling as well. Uh, then we want to move on to more C specific stuff like header files, uh, storage classes, preprocessor directives, uh, type definitions, memory allocation, and all that. And then in the advanced playlist, we want to go into more uh, sophisticated stuff like sockets and threading and threat synchronization and uh, security mechanisms preventing buffer overflow, for example, um, memory leaks, Valgrind is a tool that we're going to use, GDB debugging and all that. So more advanced stuff that is really not covered in most beginner courses when it comes to C programming. But again, it all depends on your feedback. What I want to do today in the first episode is I want to give you a motivation on why you should learn C. I want to talk a little bit about... Um, yeah, I, I want to give you a motivation to get started because a lot of you guys will think, okay, why should I learn C? I already know Python. I already know Java. Why should I learn C? And this is what I want to cover in today's video. I also want to talk a little bit about the environment setup. So I'm going to show you how we're going to use C in this tutorial uh, series or in those multiple tutorial series here. And I also want to start with the basic Hello World application in today's video already. All right, so let us get right into it. I want to give you some motivation up front here on why you should learn to program in C, because I want you to have a reason to keep watching this tutorial series, to keep watching the individual videos, because if you know why you're learning it, uh, you will be motivated to watch all the videos. And for this, I have prepared three major reasons here. Of course, there are many more reasons out there, but I want to keep this short. So I want to focus on these three. And the first one is something that is going to be uh, or something that is very focused on Python developers. So it's specifically targeted at people that are programming in Python already. I know not everyone watching this tutorial series is going to be a Python programmer, but since my channel is pretty Pythonic, I think it's fair to include a point targeted at Python developers. And the first reason is that if you are a Python developer, C is the perfect supplement that you can add to your programming arsenal. Why is that? Because C and Python are complete opposites. Python is an abstract language. It's very high level. It is very simple. It's easy to prototype stuff. A lot of the stuff is done for you. It's dynamically typed. It's slow and it also doesn't support multi-threading and so on. Whereas C is very low level. A lot of the stuff needs to be done manually. It's a very complex language. Uh, developer time usually increases. But C is a very fast language, C is statically typed, C does support multi-threading and using multiple cores and all that. So they're very different languages. And if you know both of them very well, you have a very strong skill set because you can use the benefits of Python, which are rapid prototyping, uh, data science, doing stuff quickly and simply. Uh, and you can also use the benefits of C, which is high performance and dealing with uh, scarce resources. So combining those is a very powerful move. And also uh, another reason for why specifically C is a very good supplement for Python is that C Python, which is the most common Python implementation is obviously based on C. So if you don't know what Python implementation you're using, you're basically using C Python. Uh, it's pretty much guaranteed because there are other versions as well, Jython and Iron Python and PyPy and so on. But if you're just using Python, the regular Python, you're using C Python. And as the name already says, it's based on C. And the result of that is, or as a result of that, a lot of the modules are also based on C. For example, NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn, and so on, SciPy are based on C. And you can also use tools like Scython. I have a video on that. Uh, you can use tools like Scython, or you can use C extensions to use C code in Python to speed up your script. So 
Even if you don't want to code in C, in order to write C programs, you can use Python, you can use uh, C in Python to speed up your Python code. So it's a very, very good thing to know C and Python. It's also good to understand what Python is based on. It's good in order to use parallel computing. Uh, and you cannot use Python for everything. Now, obviously, you can also not use C for everything. I mean, in theory, you can, but you shouldn't. So if you are a game developer, for example, maybe going with C++, uh, C++ or C sharp is a better move. If you are into um, I don't know, app development, for example, native app development, you should go with Java, Kotlin or Swift, depending on the platform. Um, or maybe you want to go with Flutter for a cross platform solution. But for most of the stuff, Python and C is a very powerful combination, because there's really not so much that you cannot use uh, that you cannot do if you use both languages combined. So this is uh, a very important thing. And it's also a whole different paradigm. So the second reason is a very general reason I phrased it C is just useful. Uh, but it's true because everything almost everything is running on C operating systems are based on C programming languages are based on C for example, C++ is based on C Java is based on C C++ um, Python is based on C and so on uh, embedded systems are running on C for example, elevators, airplanes and other things, basically everything where you have scarce resources. Uh, and where performance is very important, where you need to deal with a lot of hardware related stuff, C is basically used. C is the programming language of Linux. So if you're interested in Linux, you should definitely learn C. Um, and in general, if you need high performance, if you need uh, to manage resources manually, because they're very scarce, and you need to optimize everything, I would recommend going with C, of course, you can also go into assembly, uh, you can also use C++ in some cases. But C is just a nice and fast language to have uh, and to know if you need it. And the third reason is the one reason that you will read everywhere. If you type into Google, why should I learn C or should I learn C nowadays, everyone is going to tell you C makes you a better programmer. And a lot of people think that this is a stupid reason. But I think that this is actually a very, very good reason. And it's actually important uh, that C makes you a better programmer. As I already mentioned, C is the complete opposite to Python. In Python, everything is done for you, you want to define a huge number, you can just do it, you don't even need to specify a data type. In C, there is a certain limit. And if you go beyond that limit, you need to invent your own structures, you need to invent your own data types. Um, if you want to generate random numbers in Python, you just import random and you generate random numbers, you specify a range, there you go random numbers. I have a video on that how to do that in C, it's not so simple. In C, you need to do everything manually, you need to understand how randomness is even happening in programs. If you want to generate random numbers in C, you need to understand why random numbers uh, are random. I mean, they're not actually random, they're pseudo random, but you need to understand how this pseudo randomness comes into uh, into place. And you need to understand data types, you need to understand limits, you need to understand allocating memory, freeing memory, you need to understand how your system works before you can use it, you cannot just write something in C, uh, by specifying something that is approximating the English language, you need to understand actually what is happening on a system level. And because C forces you to do that, you become a better programmer and this translates uh, also into better code in other programming languages. So even if you choose to then code in Python or to code in Java, you understand what these languages are doing for you in the background. And you understand why certain things are slow in Python, why certain things are not possible in Python, and why it is possible in other languages that are more low level. So C or learning C makes you a better programmer, definitely. And I think this is a very important reason as well. So now let us move on to something more practical, which is how are we going to program in C. Now, in general, you could say that C is a platform independent language, because if I write a Hello World program, I can compile it for Linux, I can compile it for Mac, I can compile it for Windows, but certain libraries are not. So if I use certain libraries and certain features, they're going to be um, compatible with Windows and not with Linux or with Linux and not with Windows. So they're going to be platform specific. And for that reason, we need to decide, especially if we go to more advanced stuff, if we want to focus more on Windows, or if we want to focus more on Linux. Now, I think for the beginner tutorial series, this is not going to be relevant, because pointers, loops, functions, and so on, work on Linux and on Windows. But um, when we go on to forking and pipes, and so on, 
this is going to be very Linux specific. So I want to just mention this up front for the beginner tutorial series. This is not really going to be relevant. But as we go on, we need to understand the Linux system more. And because of that, we need to program on on some sort of Linux system. However, you don't have to install Linux uh, on a separate machine, you also don't need to run a virtual machine, you can just install the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, or you can choose to specialize into uh, to specialize in Windows programming if you want to. So again, as I said, for the beginner tutorial, it doesn't really make a difference. But as we go on to more advanced stuff, this is going to make a difference. Um, the operating system is going to be relevant. So what I'm going to do for this tutorial series is I'm going to use the Windows subsystem for Linux. So I'm going to code on Linux, but I'm going to do so inside of Windows. So as you can see, I'm using Windows, but I'm using Linux inside of Windows, you can do so as well. I have a tutorial on this channel where I explain how to install this in detail, how to install your Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, make sure you use the latest version, which is the WSL two. So you want to set the version to two, you can just Google that it's not too difficult. I have a tutorial on how to do this on um, Windows. And uh, basically here you can do whatever you want. So you can you can use Linux commands as you can see here ls I can go with htop I can I can use all these Linux tools in here. And we can also use the GCC compiler. So I'm going to use the GCC compiler. If you want to follow along on Windows, you can install min gw you can um, install some C compiler that is uh, an executable file or something. I'm going to use the Windows subsystem for Linux. And because of that, I'm going to use GCC in the command line here. So all you need to do on a uh, Debian based system is you need to say sudo apt install GCC if it's not installed by default, if you're using arch, you type sudo pacman, uh, I think it was dash s right and then basically uh, GCC or on uh, Fedora based systems, you say DNF install or something like that. So the important thing is that you get some compiler onto your system on Windows, you can do this using the subsystem for Linux, you can do this uh, using uh, min gw, you can do this with some Windows native stuff it doesn't really matter, you need to get some compiler onto your system. For this tutorial, we're using the Windows subsystem for Linux, I show you how to do that. And what you need besides that is you need some sort of editor, you can go with notepad plus plus you can go with sublime text, you can go with Atom. you can go with some JetBrains environment C lion, for example, you can go with code blocks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use NeoVim in the terminal, this doesn't matter to you, you just need some editor. So I'm going to use Vim. Uh, for me, there's an alias called NV. And when I type main.c, for example, this opens up a new file, and then I can type some stuff in here. So I can say, for example, include and stuff like that. Um, and then I can say stdio, for example, and as you can see, it works. You can do uh, you can choose whatever you want, you don't have to use NeoVim, you don't have to do this in the terminal, you can go with simple notepad on Windows as well. So it doesn't matter if you just open up notepad, for example, and you type all your code in here, even though it doesn't have syntax highlighting and all that. So you can just type include stdio h and save it as main.c whatever. The important thing is you choose an editor and you have a compiler, then we can work. And for this video, finally, I also want to teach you how to make a simple Hello World program in C, I want to uh, familiarize you with uh, the basic syntax of the C programming language. And for that, I'm going to create the file main.c. And we're going to write a basic Hello World program. How do we do that? We start by including something, we're going to include, um, by the way, I'm going to disable copilot so we don't get auto completion all the time. <clears throat> copilot disable, there you go. Um, and I'm going to import stdioh. This stands for standard input output header file, it just gives us the function that we need in order to print something out onto the screen. And now we need to define a main function. Now, even though this tutorial series is not going to be focused on Python programmers, I still want to mention here and there's some parallels or some differences to the Python language. Maybe this is the first language you're learning, maybe you come from a Java background. But for those of you who come from Python, you're going to notice that Python does not have usually a main function. So in Python, you just write statements. And that's it. It's a scripting language, it's an interpreted uh, scripting language. In C, we need to have an entry point, we need to have a main function, and the function needs to actually be called main. And what we specify first is the data type that this function returns, we're going to talk about data types and functions 
later on in more detail. For now, what you need to know is that we need to specify int main and we can optionally specify some arguments here. Uh, later on, we're going to talk about those. They're going to be called int arc C and character pointer pointer arc V. But for now, we're going to just ignore this in order to not confuse anyone. Uh, we're going to have this main function and we're going to use uh, curly brackets here in order to specify the block. So what we have now here is we have a function called main has the return value int for integer. This uh, is going to be irrelevant for now. Uh, we're going to talk about this in uh, the future. And inside of that function, we're going to have a return statement, return zero. Uh, this is basically just what the function returns once it's done. And zero in this case means exit code zero. And this means success. If we return with something that is not zero, there was some issue. Um, again, we're going to talk about return values when we talk about functions in more detail. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to call the print function. So the print F function, actually, we're going to type print F. And in here, we're going to type hello, world, and then in the end backslash n. Why do we type backslash n? And we're going to use a semicolon here to end the line. As you can see in C, we need to use semicolons in Python, we don't have to use those. Um, we need to provide backslash n because the printf function is not a print line function, it doesn't automatically say that a new line has to begin after it. So if we actually want to type hello world and then start a new line for the next statement, uh, we need to specify this backslash n, which is an escape character. Uh, for a line break or a new line. So now I can go ahead and compile this, I can basically just say uh, GCC main dot C. And I can also specify minus O or dash O for the output file. And I'm going to call this output file just main. So if this works like that, without any errors, we should now have this main function, or this main file. And <clears throat> in order to run this, all I need to do is I need to type point slash main on Linux, on Windows, you usually get an ex executable, and you can just run it. And you can see hello world. Now, if I don't provide this backslash in here, you're going to see that if I recompile this, and I run this, we don't have a line break here. <clears throat> now, one thing that we can also do here is we can, um, specify some placeholders in order to add some values. So for example, I can say print F. And then I can say um, calculation 10 plus 20. And then I can say equals and I can say percent D, which is the placeholder for a numerical value. Uh, and I can then pass 10 plus 20 as an argument here. And what happens here is that the result of this in this case, 30 is going to be filled into that placeholder here. So if I now go ahead and compile this, and I run this, uh, I think I didn't save it. If I compile this, and I run this, you can see that the calculation 10 plus 20 equals 30. Of course, we forgot the backslash n. Um, yeah, that is how you write a simple Hello World program in C. Let's recap real quick, we include the module that allows us to use the printf function. Inside of the printf function, we just specify in these quotation marks, Hello World, we also have to include a backslash n escape character for a new line, we need to end the statement with a semicolon every line, uh, we can use placeholders like that. And in the end, once we're done, we have to return. Now we have to return an integer because the function is called integer, we're going to talk about data types in the next video. Um, but this basically means that we're done and return zero means that it returned uh, with success. So nothing bad happened. If we return with some other uh, code, this is going to mean that something went wrong. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and 